starting to decompose, though. Oh, no, no. Whoa! Oh, my God! What was that? Somebody's trying to kill you, Critic! Why, hi, guys. I was just thinking of how Nostalgia Critic gave a negative review of Five of Goals West, and that made me angry. Just thought I'd mention it. Okay. Do you guys realize what this means? Jinkies, we have a mystery. Nostalgia Critic, where are ick? We got some work to do now. Danger levels on, that's why it was me. Uh, oh, okay. Roger? Of course, from the previous Scooby-Doo reviews, when Nobody we... cares. Oh, okay. What are you doing? We had a mystery to solve. I could have been the suspect. Nobody's falling for it. You couldn't even hurt a fly. That's not true. Look, what's going on here? I mean, we had a whole Scooby-Doo mystery planned. We even had a cute and cuddly sidekick. Ba-ba-ba-ba! I know, but that's not what people want to see anymore. They instead want to see the criminal revealed as early as possible with little attempt to make it look like it wasn't him. Yeah, says who? Says Scooby-Doo, the mystery begins. Often referred to as the third Scooby-Doo movie, this. Um, I was talking. Oh, he usually takes over at this point. But I was talking. You know, you tried to kill me. I'll explain shit to you. But I was talking. Often referred to as the third Scooby-Doo movie, this prequel aired in 2009 on Cartoon Network. Hey, remember when they used to run cartoons? Showing how our gang of mystery-solving teenagers met. What we got, I guess, is on par with the other lame Scooby-Doo movies, but there's a certain half-assed nature to a lot of it that makes it feel even more uneventful. Hell, half the characters don't even look like their original selves. That is the one thing you guys got down. What the hell is that supposed to mean? I'm telling you, this movie just doesn't try as hard as the others. But the other movies were awful, too. Exactly. I get out while you still can. Screw you, Roger! These costumes took a long time to make! Mine didn't. Most of our costumes took a long time to make, and we're gonna solve a mystery while doing this review! Okay, cool. Uh, by the way, here's all the evidence that proves I did it! Let me know if you need help figuring out who did it. It was me, by the way. Well, we're not gonna let him or this movie ruin our mystery, right? Uh, I don't know. The mystery seems pretty killed. Yeah, I feel like the Stay Black Marshmallow Man. Yeah, let's just go see if the Flintstones made another live-action movie. Mm. Wait! Come back! Zoinks and shit! <sighs> so let's see if this prequel is just as bad as its other films. This is Scooby-Doo The Mystery Begins. I warned you. Noted. So like I said before, the film is actually a prequel to the live-action films rather than a sequel. Are we ignoring the pop name Scooby-Doo mythos now? It looks like everything takes place in a town called Coolsville, but we know that's not true. The only population there is us. As the credits roll, Shaggy looks like he's late to school and has problems fitting in. <laughs> oh, have a nice trip, Shaggy. <laughs> hey, I'm sure did. You should see how they're treating Peter Parker. In fact, isn't that the same stock bully? Do they just make him in a factory? Grow up, man. Get a neckerchief or something. Oh yeah, that's supposed to be Fred, and this is supposed to be Velma. Both looking very different from their traditional designs. You see? Half of them don't even have to look like the characters anymore. Oh come on, a little change isn't such a big Whoa, deal. Oh, when did you shave your head? Oh, he did that a while ago. Yeah, people are used to it. And the different wall color? That will never forgive. Things don't seem to get better when they go to school. I hate this job. Never wanted to be a janitor. Well, go ahead, Fred and Velma. Write down that suspect. He doesn't like working there. Clearly, he's a suspect. It's totally believable. Okay, that was obviously a fake up. I don't see how the real culprit is revealed early. Like, look, here's Shaggy just randomly talking with the principal of the school. Uh, friends, Mr. Rogers, do you have any? You know what helped me? Stamp collecting. I I'm particularly excited about my latest find, One-Eyed Jack. I'm sure this character we just met going into great detail about his interests and backstory will tie into something. Anything? You'll notice that the Jackrabbit has only one eye. Those are the most valuable. <laughs> I'm sure all of this will have a connection to their characters. Critic. It's totally not just gonna pop up again at the end. Critic. There's so many ways this can tie into their personalities. Critic. It's so obviously him! Oh my god, are we even trying? Like I said, this is how it's done now. 
Come on, guys. Wait! Uh, maybe there's another mystery we can solve watching this! Like what? Like? How long would it take for someone to figure out it was him just looking at the IMDb page? Ah, Jinkies! That's a good place to start! Let the mystery begin! Actually, right away! He's literally getting captured on the homepage. Damn it! Is nobody trying?! Come on, guys. Let's see how they're ruining the live-action Tom and Jerry movie. These are supposed to be problem-solving hijinks! Meanwhile, at an adoption fair, guess who's the pet of the day? <laughs> He's very affectionate, and he'd bring a lot of joy to any family. Are you kidding? That thing looks like it would eat us out of house and home. Or just eat us. I give credit that Scooby looks more like the cartoon in this version, in that he looks two-dimensional and poorly animated, but sometimes the people's reactions to him are just strange. Like, look at this father and daughter who decide to adopt him. <laughs> My god! Licking! A dog jumping and licking me? What does that? Crazy mess gotta get strong! I am a Vietnam vet! I have seen terrible things! But the dog jumping on me and licking me? There is no therapy or church for that! So after realizing Coolsville looks ironically dull, Scooby escapes from his cage and goes out on his own, coming across a graveyard where this seems to happen. <laughs> Alright, let's play a game. What's more frightening, the intentionally scary ghost rising up from the grave, or the unintentionally frightening eyes on Yogi Bear's ball sack here? You have chosen wisely. Scooby runs away from the ghost and comes across Shaggy's house where he sneaks in. <laughs> Whoa, I think this shit just kicked in, man! What's the matter, boy? Something out there got you spooked? Um, Shaggy? Scooby's over there. What's under that sheet and why now? <sighs> Scoobert new. Like, I wonder if people call you Scooby. I think anything sounds better than Scoobert. It sounds like someone microwaved Burton's scooter from the Muppets. It's all levels of unpleasant. There's no reason for my story. Naturally, the two of them get along and they partake in this terrifying dance animation. You make it. Now let's play another game. Which of these random face caps will haunt you till your dying day? You know yourself well. They dress him as the scuba bomber and sneak him onto the bus. Calm down, boy. You know, this damn dog has been scary enough already in this film. Do we really want to make him look like a slasher from a low-budget horror film? Actually, screw it. Can we see that film instead? Scooby causes trouble, though, resulting in the bus losing control. He'll be fine. My new car. It had just two days left till retirement. Who is responsible for this? Well, clearly the driver or them. You will spend two hours in this room every day starting at three o'clock sharp. Got it? Well, we better start Breakfast Club or the Power Rangers. No talking, no texting, and no eating. Not enough, they cut my budget, now I've got to do double duty with a bunch of illiterates. Let's hear it for the random librarian's fake out! It wasn't the least bit convincing, but we had to give some impression the writers were trying. Some. But the room starts shaking as something supernatural seems to be going on. Oh no, Otho's reading from the handbook for the recently deceased again. They run into the gym during a pep rally and oh, look at that! The principal happens to be there too! I wonder if a masked character is gonna pop up soon. <laughs> Leave this place now or pay for all eternity! You know it's sad when a lifeless mascot looks more alive than your supposedly living animal. Whoever chooses to remain here will be doomed! Anyway, the password is Fidelio. Get undressed, let the orgy begin. <laughs> the vice principal blames our heroes for this scare, though, because... Eh, they're right there. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to inform you that you no longer have detentions. Because now you're all suspended. Now if you kindly point me in the direction of something I can go <laughs> about... Oh, yes, that's very good. Uh, Scooby-Doo, where are you? Oh, come on, do you even watch this show? It's not right here, it's all over here. That's like saying live long and succeed in material terms or be financially successful. I know it's the same thing, but it's not the same thing! Shaggy invites everyone to his house to figure out what the story is behind these ghosts. 
There's extra chicken soup in the fridge. Thanks, Ma. I'll be on my cell phone all day if you need anything. And I'm leaving you with your favorite friend, Roger. He's going back to the science lab. Fred, Daphne. Hey, Shaggy. Sweet pad, Shag. Thank you. Oh, huh, is that a black light drawing of Sammy Davis Jr.? Even for Shaggy, that seems really odd. I mean, it was clearly Sinatra that coined the phrase Scooby-Doo, but knowing these writers, the only Rat Pack they probably know is these guys. You are not gonna believe this. So they look up who the ghosts in the pep rally seem to be. It looks like the Lutesses are up to their old tricks again. Time capsule, what's that? It's a small container used to preserve historical artifacts in order to capture a certain time. Like nostalgia, and the various ways you can cash in on it. So they sneak back into the school so they can examine the scene of the crime. Sheesh, even the background is giving him hints on how to write a better movie. I took the liberty of barring this for investigation. Jinkies! Look at this! What is it? I'm not sure. And based on the fact that this is a high school, I don't know if I want to find out. But the ghosts attack by taking over football mannequins. You know, those usual football mannequins every school has. Care to play around? <laughs> Come on! Your luck just ran out! <laughs> okay, to be fair, I'm a woman from the 1800s. I clearly don't know how to play football! Let's go, Scoo! <laughs> Why do we suddenly look like Snoopy the dog's breast? Creepy stuff happens in the dark, man! They're locked in the freezer, and the next day they're discovered by the vice principal. Plainly, these paranormal poultry guys aren't pussyfooting around. We'll have to call Peter Piper and his peck of peppers for this! The vice principal asks if this was all Shaggy's doing. No, it was just us. Hold on. It wasn't just them. I was there, too. So was I. Yeah! I'm Spartacus! Well, I am pleased to inform you that your suspensions have been lifted. <laughs> Hallelujah! You're now to be executed! Oh yeah, we can do that! They end up getting expelled as Shaggy tries to think of who the other suspects could be. I hate this school. Never wanted to be a janitor. <laughs> like, I was totally in a trash can down the hall when he said that. I got the shining! Now I've got to do double duty with a bunch of illiterates. <laughs> Guys, we got suspects! <laughs> See that? They got suspects. Mystery's getting good. I know everything in the world says one thing, but taking out facts, proof, evidence, and character history, I really feel there's a solid case from these clearly unbalanced individuals. Get to it! There's a mystery here! A good one! Scooby Dooby Doo, where I. Oh god, this movie's stupid! Well, that one was easy. I didn't even need to say a line. Come on, guys, let's insert live action Hannah Barbera joke here. So, Hyper, is that your real name? It's a way of life. So the gang wants to interview the suspects, but can't be seen at the school, so they all work on disguises. Does Scooby just eat a fly like a frog? You guys have done episodes with the Harlem Globetrotters, Kiss, and Don Knotts. How are you finding new ways to make this more insane? They're apparently impressed, though, with how Daphne made over Velma. Wubba wubba. You can say that again, Scoob. Wubba wubba. Congratulations, you're attractive to a dog. Achievement unlocked. Fred goes as a cool as ice poster, Daphne goes as the chick from Blair Witch 2, and I'm not gonna lie, I did chuckle when I saw Shaggy and Scooby going as trash cans. Pull your pants up, droopy drawers. Droopy drawers? Isn't that the name of Scooby's cousin or something? Or am I thinking of the porno version? I'm fine not knowing the answer to either. So they spy on the two suspects and find the librarian is clean and the janitor is... Possibly gonna kill someone, but hasn't yet. So they now suspect the vice principal, because of course that's the next probable choice. Velma, can you find out where he lives? He lives on top of Coolsville Mountain. It takes us all night to ride our bikes up there. Teachers don't get paid shit. How the hell is he living at the top of a mountain? Unless he's in a hut waiting to light the beacons of Gondor? I don't see how this is possible! Shaggy reveals he can drive them up there because he has a license and is older than he looks because he was held back. All right, I got held back! <sighs> Well, that was
was a necessary dive into Scooby's thought process. Wouldn't a more fitting conclusion be something like this? <laughs> so they go to find a car from Daphne's extremely rich family. Right behind ya. Oh, groovy! We can kidnap a ton of kids with that! 300,000 miles! Hence a mystery this machine still runs! Cool! Hey, did you also know that the Ghostbuster logo came from a graffiti artist in the subway? Nobody cares! Mm -hmm. Oh good, um, those are working. <laughs> and now to just start us up. Ooh, is it weird that all I'm thinking about is what that useless toy cameo front and center is thinking? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this ain't a shit. It goes on and on forever. How did this film get greenlit? <laughs> they drive to the vice principal's house where they have some friendly conversations in the car. What? No, oh, nothing. It's just... Since we started this investigation, so many of my theories have been disproved. Like the theory that I'm attracted to boys. You were right about the chemical, and, and you found the name? No, no, not about that stuff. About... you. I refer you back to my last joke. They make it to the vice principal's house where they split up and search for clues. Come on, Scoob, let's see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hear Scoopy Offset does an amazing Julius Caesar. His rendition of Ren's Runtryman, Ren Me Your Rears, sends shivers down the New York Times critic, but, you know, he does the fart stuff to pay the bills. Rough. The ghosts appear to be waiting for them and. <laughs> Why are you going in planes? You're ghosts! That's enough! It's like if Freddy Krueger went into the soul of a fly! Hey, I'm a fly, bitch! I'm a goddamn fly! Wow, you really do suck at this. So it looks like they solved the mystery of who did it. Time capsule. It's gotta be what he's after. We did it! <laughs> we solved the mystery! And with 20 minutes to spare, anyone wanna play Clue? I bet we'll all suck at it! The ghosts scare them outside, though, where they fall into a trap. I am the great and poorly rendered Oz. <laughs> he gasses them and takes them to the high school where he forces them to find the capsule or he'll kill Scooby. You'll never get away with this, Vice Principal Grimes. Yes, because those two clearly have the same build of one another. Peter Dinklage was my next guess. Shaggy, what are you doing? Hanging myself. I want out of this film. Scooby Doo's my dog and I do anything to save him. They all head down to find the capsule, where we come across a very strange thing moment. Are you okay? Never better. <laughs> Has anyone anywhere ever shipped Velma and Fred? Was that in high demand? I'm gonna take a wild guess and say Scoopy and Shaggy have more slash art than these two. It doesn't go anywhere anyway, as they trick the villain into coming down. I think we found it! Uh, the, the problem is, it's really heavy! <sighs> Well, all right, where is it? Well, come on, let me have it. I insist that you let me have it. And I mean that in a completely unironic way. Oh no, an ironic way! <laughs> they get the book from him and try undoing the spells, but it only releases more ghosts. And funny enough, they forgot to write in how this affects our heroes as the ghosts never make their way towards them. They just go after random people. I mean, what are we supposed to say here? Oh no, that lady won't be able to microwave her lasagna. It's like saying, I need to find a spell to get rid of these monsters! Ish kabibble, ish kaboom! Oh, huh. now it seems there's monsters in Australia. Actually, some of these ghosts may get a little too friendly. I'm just assuming he was tying her shoe. They finally say the spell to send all the ghosts back, but our main villain is still there. Do you think that changes anything? Dynamite lit! It's pretty damn good timing. If even one thing got delayed, the scene would be like... You think that changes anything? I'm still the only... Though the film would be a lot shorter. Scoopy escapes and saves the day, though, leading them to discover really the only person left, and they're still somehow surprised by it! Principal Deal! You ruined everything. This doesn't make any sense. Really? This doesn't make sense? I mean, okay, the guy dressing up as a ghost to get time capsule in the real world, yeah, I'm sure, but I mean, in Scooby-Doo, really? 
Of course, he reveals what we already knew, that the rare stamp he was talking about in the beginning was in the time capsule, and this was all a ploy to get it. I feel like there could have been several ways to accomplish this, not including raising the dead, but he says the thing. It would have been all mine if it weren't for you meddling kids and your dog. Are people not seeing Mangy anymore? I love Mangy. Bring back Mangy. The students are praised for their work and given a celebration in their honor. It was a combination of Fred's leadership. Velma's brains. <laughs> Daphne's resourcefulness. I am the most important ingredient of all. Pot. Our friendship. No, no, it's definitely pot. I, I can't believe it. We solved an actual mystery. Actually, you didn't. You had the wrong suspects the whole time until you amassed him. You escaped death by blind luck, but that doesn't look as good on the side of a van. Shaggy, however, takes some of the dog treats he made earlier and decides to give them a name. Would you do it for a Scooby snack? Will we whack? <laughs> yeah, I figure you love these treats so much I'd name them after you. Somehow I'll manufacture them and get no credit, but at least we have an incredibly wonky origin story now. We end with tons of scenes either recreating the cartoon or we wish were in the film we saw and the movie finally ends. It's really amazing how much of this does and yet somehow doesn't connect to the cartoon. I guess just like the other Scooby-Doo movies when you really think about it. So, Critic, now do you see why you didn't try as hard on this one? I don't know, Roger. Maybe we can solve the mystery of why you didn't try- Yeah, it's pretty obvious. The movie is bad, but it's bad in a different way from the other Scooby films. Those movies were at least creative in how awful and unfocused they were. This one is just kind of bland and generic. On the one hand, it makes sense. It's a kid's TV movie with a much lower budget. But it's instantly forgettable. I mean, the acting is fine for the most part, and the effects for a kid's film, I guess, are passable. But in a weird way, it's even more infuriating that you can't get that angry at it. At least the other two were spectacularly bad. This one is just unimpressively bad. I don't know if you want to take that as a compliment or an insult, but it's still a Scooby turd I suggest passing up. So I guess if we're not going to do a mystery, we might as well put the costumes back. You know, it's a shame, Roger. I was really looking forward to doing something with... Oh yeah, Roger's still a psycho. Well, we'll show him. And you're dead too. Okay. Well, there's only one thing to do in this situation. Netflix and chill! <laughs> whenever somebody dies around here. You should really get some rate for that. Oh! Let's see who this dinosaur really is! Rob! Let's see who this Rob really is! Rob! Let's see who this Rob really is! Old Man Rob! Let's see who Old Man Rob really is! Old Man Dinosaur! Came full circle, kinda. Guys, what are we doing? Open, so that may be a glass <laughs> Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing City of Hope. 
Founded in 1913, City of Hope is a leading research and treatment center for cancer, diabetes, and other life-threatening diseases. Designated as a comprehensive cancer center, the highest honor bestowed by the National Cancer Institute, and a founding member of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, City of Hope's research and treatment protocols advance care throughout the nation. Every discovery they make and new treatment they develop gives patients the chance to live longer, better, and more fully. Their patient-centered philosophy guides everything that they do. Their researchers advance ideas into discoveries, physicians bring emerging therapies to patients, and students learn to transform the landscape of modern medicine. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you'll see that every day they pursue new and better ways to improve the lives of millions of people around the world. Click on the link and see why for many, City of Hope is where hope begins.